Hello and welcome to the review of the BoardWorks Froth 5.6 Surfboard. Uh, this board can be found on Amazon and is priced at $269 at the moment. I've seen them actually cheaper. You just have to wait. Uh, and if you are not familiar, you can plug in the Amazon URL into camelcamelcamel.com and it will actually uh, give you a price history as well as alert you uh, when the price goes down. So it's a very useful tool. Uh, this froth, if you're not familiar, is basically a uh, epoxy board that uh, has a real maple stringer and then it is uh, resin hot coat wrapped uh, so it's basically a hard board th uh, then which I guess they put a soft EVA uh, foam around it so you might think it's a foam board and for all intensive purposes it is however it does have a hard inner core and therefore isn't like your typical foam boards, not like the Wavestorm, not like the Catch Surf boards, etc. Those are uh, foam throughout. They have wood stringers to keep them rigid, but that's all they have. And one thing I found with the Wavestorm is that over time, they do tend to soak water. And I don't know where it holds the water, but the boards seem to get heavier and heavier. So the froth board, this particular one is 5'6" by 21 by 2 and 7 eighths. It's 37.4 liters. It's, it actually has real Futures Finbox um, sockets and it comes with uh, these plastic Future fins and a key. So I think that's a step up from a Wavestorm um, and a lot of other softboards that have the uh, soft rubber type fins that actually go through the board with the two plastic plugs. I've broken a few of those uh, as well on top of having broken them they don't hold as well. So here are the fins that come with the board. They are futures as I mentioned and it comes in a little ziplock which I didn't realize was a ziplock so I tore it. Uh, standard G template is my guess. My hands are kind of full so I apologize but the fins are stiff and it's like a hard plastic so I wouldn't uh, be too impressed with them but they're free and the board at the bottom here has a cool little design and there it's kind of raised so there's some texture to it and so I kind of like the way that feels and for the most part the board is pretty nice it's got this texturing at the tail like a tail pad but uh, from our experience of having surfed the 7.0 you do need wax and the nose and the tail have these kind of foam pads so which make it a little softer so that's a good thing if you hit someone or you get hit by your own board, you're not going to do any damage. Uh, those black pads are uh, really soft compared to the rest of the board. One thing I want to mention about this board is it, it is really thick and the rails are boxy. Uh, I had thought that the, the front half of that board, the top half would be more rounded like a, a real surfboard, but it's got this real hard edge and um, I don't know what that does to performance but it is a foamy and for beginners I think it's so far looks great uh, and at the price point I think it's a step up from the wave storm. If you're watching this video carefully you'll see that giant dent at the middle of the board. Anyways that I didn't notice when I was taking this video. Here's a better view of the dent. It's pretty big. It's definitely beyond keeping so I will have to return this board. Here is the replacement board that I got from Amazon and it's the exact same board same size 
Um, yeah, this one definitely came in better shape. The box wasn't as bad and uh, the board didn't have any major dents. So pleased with that and we'll be able to take it out surfing. So the one thing I did want to kind of show you on this is uh, the rocker. When you get this box, it's kind of interesting because the box is so flat, you think there can't be a surfboard in there. But there is, and the reason why is because the board itself is relatively flat. So if you look at it from the top, it's very flat. But because of the thickness, they could shave away the tail and the nose, giving it you know, a good bit of rocker. So the front, if you notice, has that rocker. And then uh, I think previously I mentioned what I didn't like was the boxy rails. So it's got this hard edge that goes all the way around from tail to nose. Uh, so it's very, very boxy. And this particular board, for whatever reason, seemed thicker than the first one. But that's not a bad thing. It is meant to be a beginner board. Uh, so at any rate, just wanted to show you the foil of the board and what that looked like. So the tail thins up relatively well. And thick in the middle so it should paddle really really well so all that's left to do is go surf it and hopefully we'll have a little bit of surf so we can or at least I can get a sense of how the board actually feels so here's the first wave this is at Bolsa Chica and as you can see the waves are really soft and that wave took a little getting used to I'm used to a much smaller performance type board but uh, that problem is mine because uh, I tend to want to surf everything like a short board so I'm terrible at long boarding so here I'm trying to surf ahead of my board instead of letting the board do the work but I start getting used to it uh, great flotation very very easy to catch waves it's 37.4 uh, liters but I almost feel like it's actually a little bit more than that um, so here's my third wave and I think I start getting a little bit more used to it uh, that one wasn't a great wave though and then I'll try to take a couple rights a little bit later but it was actually a pretty good day so I was pleased with the waves and it was more about testing and as you can see they're very soft and that board I have to apologize because I always get off because it's too soft for what's in my head and how I want to surf but on that board I could probably just stay on it and literally ride it all the way to the sand if I wanted this one here seemed looked like a really nice wave and I think it was pretty long but my brother wasn't paying attention so there's my first right and I was able to kind of throw it up there uh, for for the board and and the one thing I did notice is in the beginning I was over paddling I felt like because of the boxy rails I felt like I wasn't catching the wave so every time I paddled I think the water was pushing on the board and as I started to surf it more I realized the board actually had the wave like if you notice I didn't try that hard to catch that one and it, it almost looked like I wasn't gonna catch it but that volume just uh, made it that easy to catch the wave and I think from here on out, uh, I try a little less paddling and and uh, it seems to work fine. So as you can see from the last two waves, I started getting used to the board and it's surfing pretty decent. I had a good backside off the lip, I had a nice floater. Um, and uh, it goes down the line fine. This one here, I, look, I didn't even think I was going to catch that one. I just stood up and then it caught it. So this is my last wave. but as you can see I'm able to pump it down the line so I think if you're looking for a board after the wave storm or even in place of a wave storm this is a good option they come in several different sizes they even have an 80 which is 10 liters lighter than the wave storm but it's a better performing board and my next board I'm gonna try the 50 which I think will serve really really well so stay tuned and please like and subscribe